Assalamualaikum and very good day to all. So in this video, I will continue from the part that we have left in the um, last video. So we start with the classification of systems. There are few uh, category in systems. So the first one is the memoryless system or what we, certain books say as instantaneous uh, system. Okay, instantaneous system. So this system doesn't store any uh, memory or data for the system to reuse after that. So the, the example, okay, um, for this type of system is any circuit with resistor. So if you see in this video, we have two resistors here and it will, um, the system will use whatever um, data or um, output, uh, sorry, input that used in, in that time. So, uh, the, the, the V0, T0 here depends upon the value of VI, T0 and not on VI, T for T0 equal to T0. So, it's a, it just use uh, this equation to get whatever value that V0 uh, in the certain time uh, of uh, in the system okay and if the system with memory or what we call as dynamic system okay uh, this system actually has storage elements so basically in electrical component the storage element that actually can be used uh, is capacitor, right? So capacitor and uh, the output of such system is actually a function of post value of the input as well. So we can always get whatever um, the value of the input in the previous time element. For example, when we want um, the system of x and minus 1 uh, or x and minus 2 so this type of system okay with the e different equations with this um, depends on how we can come out and use this element to be um, to be arranged okay and next causal system so causal system or what we call as uh, non anticipatory system okay i give you other term that represent the same uh, thing okay so that if you refer to any uh, textbook uh, it's actually the same meaning okay causal and non-anticipatory so for this one um, uh, the output only exists after the input applied to the system so basically only using the current or present, uh, uh, call it present input as well and previous input so that you can use it to obtain the output of the system. Another one more system what we call here is non-causal system. So for non-causal system, actually this is the system where the output, okay, is using the future input sample okay for example uh, when we have a system with this type of equation sorry okay so uh, previously when we have causal system or uh, just now what we call a system with memory we use pre previous uh, input, alright, or input sample, uh, such as okay, this is future input sample, and for the uh, previous input sample, we always put it like this: x and minus one, x and minus two. This is the previous sample, okay. And if you have x n, alright, this is the present or current 
uh, sample we have for the system to use. Okay, so make sure that you understand what does this equation or um, I'll call it um, um, I mean equation I would say even though it doesn't have um, I'll call it uh, the whole input of system uh, the whole um, we'll call it uh, shape of system okay and another one is linear and non-linear so for linear system is actually uh, the output is proportional to the input and it satisfy the properties of addition supposition and scaling so if you have uh, two uh, system here where the x1 is the input okay and y1 is the output so this is the first system and this is the second system so we want to add these two inputs and we want to see what happened to the in to the outputs so you can just add and come up with this uh, equation with star okay so this is what we call as addition for scaling is how we can expand compress or we want to uh, expand or compress okay so we can use um, a constant over here k uh, and it actually can be can be any value all right um, and if if it's a more than one k is more than one this is what we call as compression okay if k less than one this is called as dilation right so uh, when we have this kind of uh, scaling method in the system uh, it will uh, we'll call it shape your um, signal to be different right? and for superposition uh, this is what we call as um, when you have scaling and addition to be used together so we have two systems just now uh, system one we input x1 and output y1 another second system we input x2 and output y2 so if we see over here this is the, how the superposition um, is done so we have the scaling part all right and then we have the addition part in the input oh sorry okay and we have at the output we still have the the uh, scaling and also the summation uh, process of the output okay so this is the linear system uh, we also have non-linear system where the system doesn't follow whatever characteristic from superposition and scaling and also the addition properties doesn't apply to this non-linear so um, so whatever uh, input that you have you may not get the output as how the linear system should be okay so whatever uh, when, whenever you have zero input uh, and the output is not zero this is also what we call as non-linear system okay right next is time invariant and time variant system so for the time invariant, uh, meaning that whatever you have um, uh, before, I mean in the previous uh, sample, you will get the same thing when you have make it the sample to be in present. So um, for this matter, actually I do make some uh, exercise in Kalam in Moodle, so you can try it on uh how this time invariant and time variant means okay remember for one uh term that we use is actually time varying system okay so if you have um uh what we call it two two systems and you want to see either it it produce the same output whenever you move the time or sample uh, that means it's actually the time invariant because 
uh, the output will be the same. Mm, doesn't matter how uh, the the sample you move it, either in previous or in future. But for the time varying, the input, uh, sorry, uh, the output of the system will be changed whenever you move the uh, time sample. Either make it earlier or delay. Uh, the output will be different both ways. Okay. So for the time time variant or time varying, okay, this is two same meaning. It's the opposite of time invariant system. So for further um, understanding, for better understanding, I think better you go for uh, the, the exercise in I put in Moodle or Kalam. Next is the linear time, linear and time invariant system. So this system is actually combination of linear system as well as time invariant system. So in this system, both uh, properties apply, and this is what we be fo focusing more in this course. And of course, when we want to uh, analyze this type of system, uh, we'll we will need to use Fourier and Laplace transform. So for the next chapter, chapter two, we we'll be you will be learning about uh, Fourier series. Then after that, Fourier transform uh, in chapter three and chapter four, you will learn about Laplace transform. And in chapter five, you'll be using those um, methods uh, in filter filter response. Okay. Right, next is the signal. Um, Characteristic. So there are, um, I can divide it into three: periodic and aperiodic, uh, even and odd symmetry. Okay, and then these are the examples you may um, see. And I think this is not new um, term for you uh, because we have learned this in uh, communication system design course. So for the periodic function. Um, it always defined as FT, uh, function of time is function where you have time and the period. And how you can find the period is by using the, the equation over here, uh, right? or what we call as fundamental frequency. If you change this to be F equal 1 over period and for the angular frequency you may use this equation oh sorry all right um, but i just try to move on so for example this equation uh, this graph or figure we have a sinusoidal signal with the period of 2 pi because we want to see uh, what uh, what is the time taken for one cycle of signal so this is 2 pi and the amplitude is 1, okay, the, high, the highest uh, peak and al also the lowest peak. Uh, the highest peak, uh, we will always take for the highest peak on the positive level. So the amplitude is 1. Alright, and if you want to know uh, the angular frequency, you may use the equation of 2 pi divided by 2 pi. Because the the t over here is two pi, okay, so equal to one, right? So uh, you can do uh, again for this equation. Uh, sorry, for this figure, and I think already you already know the the period of this uh, sinusoidal signal, which the t is one cycle of signal, which is pi, and the amplitude is the highest position of the signal, uh, which is 3, all right? And the angular frequency is uh, 2 because it is 2 pi divided by pi. So we cross the pi so you can get 2. So this is the answer, all right? That's tally. Uh, for the next example, I hope you can study yourself because the answer actually given in the notes. Uh, and for the even and odd function, basically you need to know uh, this 
property, I would say. Okay, so I'm sorry, this is some um, typo in this uh, file. Alright, so you may refer to your slide. So whenever you have a function that on the positive time, it's actually the same one at the negative time. So you try to uh, mirror it on the uh, uh, y-axis. Okay, so when you flip here, you will get the same one. And for the odd function, all right, uh, we will see it when you want you flip it on the x uh, axis. Okay, so if you flip it over here, you will get this one. Okay, right. So that is even an odd function. Okay, so you can try to do this example three as well. Right. For uh, this is the solution for the previous uh, example and also the explanation. Okay. So uh, as you as you know, the signal actually can be represented using either time domain and also frequency domain. And basically, this time and frequency representation is actually related, interrelated, whereby uh, most of the common representation of signal, we use the time domain. Uh, this is the one that you see in the oscilloscope. Okay. Uh, you also need to know the the content or properties of that signal. So what we need to do is we need to analyze the signal, right? And basically, all the analysis signal analysis technique only work if we use the frequency domain. So uh, that's why we use the uh, spectral analyzer, right, to see what are the content of frequency in that signal. Right, and solution can be more easily found if we represent the signal into frequency domain. And also, uh, frequency domain also is the other way how we can represent a signal. So this figure basically is the uh, representation, okay, of this is the time domain. And this is the frequency domain, okay, which we only have the peak. But the peak here is actually uh, represent the peak of the uh, amplitude in the time domain. Okay. And same as this one. Uh, this is the 3D dimension view. Sorry, 3D view. So this one is 2D. So if we see over here, um, the, the amplitude of the signal with the green color represent the one with this. Okay. And for the... Pink color represent with the this one. All right, and I think uh, the the combination of these two signal we represent the signal with red color. All right, so that is why you really need to understand the signal representation using time domain and also frequency domain. So for the next video, I will explain. Uh, for the next part of the chapter, which is the elementary signal, as well as the signal operations. Okay, thank you for listening.